In the canon of the Wild West, you cannot set apart Wyatt Earp from Doc Holliday. They go together like cowboys and horses, whiskey and shot glasses, and guns and holsters. Gary Roberts, the author of Doc Holliday, The Life and Legend, says Wyatt Earp is the hero, the stalwart lawman, the primary figure. Doc Holliday is a 1997 biography of the real-life John Henry Holliday. But Doc is the individual who adds color. People like the guy who tells it like it is and doesn't back down and stands up for what's right. But the person who is the most intriguing is the charming, surly, quick-tempered, loyal, educated one. Now, here are the 10 things you didn't know about Doc Holliday. Some made it into the show while others didn't. Stay tuned till the end as number one is the most intriguing. Number 10. Earp wasn't Doc's only friend. In many parts of the West, Doc was an oddity. He was an educated Southerner who made his money through gambling so that he could rub people the wrong way. There was a number of people who didn't like Doc for a variety of people, I suppose. He was a person who could be moody, but he had friends in every place that he went, Robert says. Holiday's moodiness was perhaps a product of suffering for years with tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was often compounded by drinking, and later, by the drug laudamin he took for pain. That added to him being a loner. Still, he was longtime friends with the Colorado newspapermen and saloon keepers all the West. He also kept in touch with people he grew up with in Georgia. Additionally, as Doc lay dying in a Colorado hotel room in 1887, practically penniless, guess who came to his rescue? Well, you're right. His fellow gamblers and saloon keepers helped pay his bills. Unlike the scene in the movie Tombstone, Earp was not present when Doc died at the age of 36. Number 9. Doc was a real doctor Holliday was born in Griffin, Georgia, spent some of his childhood in Valdosta, Georgia, and was educated in the classics. At 19, he moved to Philadelphia to enroll in the Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery and later practiced dentistry in stops that included St. Louis, Atlanta, and Dallas. He gave it up as he moved around, his health deteriorated, and he found more success as a gambler. Doc's reputation as a fast gun, a killer, and as perhaps someone with a death wish was probably more fearful than the man himself. He's believed to have killed less than a handful of men in his life. Number 8. Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday weren't that close Doc and Earp were indeed friends. In the 1881's famous gunfight at the OK Corral, the two fought in Tombstone, Arizona, but they had met four years earlier while passing through Texas. In between, they had crossed paths, but it's not like they went everywhere together. Doc is frequently portrayed as if he's kind of Wyatt Earp's sidekick, almost like a lapdog who was there on hand always to help Wyatt out, and Wyatt was indebted to him. Roberts mentions from his home in Tifton, Georgia, that was true, he was, Doc did help to save his life in Kansas. However, at the gunfight in Tombstone, and once they completed a bloody vendetta against those who ambushed Earp's brother at the OK Corral, Doc and Earp grew apart. In fact, a few years later, they may have had a falling out in Albuquerque. They didn't need each other anymore, Roberts indicates. I don't think their friendship was over necessarily. They just went different ways. Number 7. The Reason Doc Came West While it could have been partly due to adventure, the main reason that Doc came west was because of his consumption. His mother succumbed to it, so he knew what the final stages of the disease looked like. And at the time, people believed that the dry air would give the afflicted a chance for longer life. Doc came for this reason. Unfortunately, he was unable to stop the disease, and he later succumbed to it. Number 6. Doc had a slight build The Doc in the show is represented as a very handsome, tall, and built masculine male. Yet, multiple accounts say that the real Doc was a tall, skinny man, barely 130 pounds. Since he suffered from consumption for years, it seemed reasonable that he had a thin frame. Still, he could draw and shoot and was an excellent addition to any gunfight. Witnesses reported that Doc hid a gun beneath his coat. While interesting, this would seem a challenge for such a thin man to do well. Number 5. Doc Didn't Have a Death Wish Doc contracted tuberculosis, then referred to as consumption at an early age. He probably got it from his mother who died of it. He fought with it much of his adult life, often relocating to places he thought would assist each symptom. Doc's movement alone makes Robert bristle at the suggestion that he longed for early death. He's portrayed in most accounts as a fatalist, somebody who knew he was going to die from the disease and, in a sense, gave up on life so that he didn't care whether he lived or died, Roberts indicates. I think it was certain that he knew that he was going to die eventually from it. He knew enough about consumption and that he knew he would not have a long life. I expect that explains some of the melancholy and some of the cynicism that you see from him. 
There were too many instances where it was crystal clear that he wanted to live. For example, his travels, getting out of Georgia, going to Dodge City, Kansas, to Las Vegas, New Mexico, to Leadville, Colorado, to Arizona, and even later to Butte, Montana, all showed that Doc was searching for a place to live more comfortably. His last trip was to Glenwood Springs, Colorado, famous then for its supposedly therapeutic hot springs, and that's where he passed on. Number 4. Doc's Persona and Complicated Stories It's believed that Doc killed many people, sometimes because he was just angry or drunk. However, some people thought he'd used this persona for protection and that he didn't kill that many people. In addition, the only person known that Doc killed is Tom McLowry at the OK Corral. Doc's persona and mystery make him such a fascinating historical figure. The air of mystery continues in the Doc of Winona Earp, a character we constantly root for but also cross fingers that he'll let us down. Number 3. I'm your Huckleberry and you're a Daisy The 1993 movie Tombstone has contributed towards stroking Doc's image as an eccentric, thanks to an iconic performance by Val Kilmer as Doc. Around two lines in it are memorable. One of them might even be historically accurate. When Doc meets up with bad guy Johnny Ringo in the film, he declares, I'm your Huckleberry. The phrase was famous at the time and it meant, I'm the one you're looking for. At the OK Corral, witnesses say Frank McLowry got a late advantage on Doc during the 30-second fight and declared, I got you now, you son of a bitch. Doc answered, historically, this is close to accurate. You're a daisy if you do. The statement meant, good for you if you do. Number 2. Doc's tumultuous relationship with Kate in the show, we can see that Doc and Kate's relationship was important, but their love isn't as present as it was when they were fully human. We also know that their love is on and off. This nature of their romance stems from history. At times, Kate got referred to as Doc's wife. They moved around together and also lived together. Also, Kate was rumored to help Doc out, setting fire to a shed to divert attention from Doc as he supposedly knifed a local. However, this story might just be a legend as the couple themselves. These two were on and off for years. While Doc had an appetite for women, Kate was the only one that was long-term. Number 1. Doc was a mama's boy The real Doc was very close to his mother, and some would have said she spoiled him. As a result, when she died, it was hard for Doc. Supposedly, she had spent more time with him because young Doc had a speech impediment and other health problems. Regardless, Doc grew to have a solid bond with his mother. The fact that she died of consumption made things worse and was probably in his mind when he also came down with consumption. Well, those are the 10 things you didn't know about Doc Holiday. Did number one amuse you? We hope you enjoyed our video. and Be sure to give us a thumbs up and share it. We value your feedback. Share your thoughts with us in the comment section. And also, subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to get notified when we upload new and interesting content. And until next time, goodbye.